Welcome back to our series where we're explaining all the economic data releases that you see in the monthly cycle and how they relate to each other to help you better deal with them in the markets. This time around, we're taking a look at one of the most important monthly releases, and it's one that even makes it onto the mainstream news. It's the Consumer Price Index, also known as CPI, which is a measure of inflation. So let's start off by briefly going through what inflation is. Individual prices of goods and services will change over time in the economy. Some things will go up in price, some things will go down in price, but collectively, the general price level in the economy will either be rising or falling. So inflation refers to a rise in the general level of prices of goods and services in the economy. This also means that the purchasing power of the currency is reduced, since a unit of currency can now buy less than it could before. For example, let's say that you have a weekly shopping budget of $100, and in 2020, everything on your shopping list cost you exactly $100. What are the chances? However, one year later in 2021, those same items on your shopping list now come to $105. So this means you can either not buy as much as you could before, or you have to pay more money to get the same items. In other words, the value of your money has decreased. If that rise of the price of your shopping list is representative of what's going on in the entire economy, we would say that year-on-year -year inflation in the economy has risen by 5%. Now, there are many different factors that can influence inflation, but generally, we refer to three broad categories of inflation. We have demand pool inflation, which means that prices are rising because there's more demand, more demand than the supply for goods and services. We have cost push inflation, which is when the cost of producing goods and services is higher, perhaps due to the cost of wages or materials that are increasing in price. And built-in inflation is when cost push or demand pull inflation sticks around for a while and becomes a normal and expected aspect of the economy, which leads to things like people demanding higher wages, which then leads to prices having to rise to account for that and leads to this wage price spiral. So inflation is expected when an economy is growing. So some inflation can be a good thing because it shows the economy is doing quite well. Most major central banks target a 2% inflation rate, but if it pushes too far above that or too far below that, they may have to take action. We'll discuss that in a little while. Now, there are a number of different ways to measure inflation. Three of the most popular ones are the producer price index, which measures inflation at the production stage. Then we have personal consumption expenditure and the consumer price index, which both measure inflation for consumers. So CPI is a monthly release that measures the change in prices that consumers pay for a basket of goods. Similar to that example I gave a bit earlier about the shopping list. CPI usually includes goods that are regularly purchased by households, such as food, energy, furniture, and so on. However, what's included in that basket of goods will vary depending on the country. Now, this basket of goods doesn't include every single item we could all possibly buy, since that would really be impossible to collect regularly. So instead, it sort of represents a sample of what we call representative items. For example, in the UK CPI release, there are 700 separate items and over 100,000 prices are collected for those items. Now, some people assume that CPI is for essential items or it's a gauge of the cost of living, but that's not necessarily the case. For example, the UK, their release includes the price of cigarettes, which isn't really an essential item for most people, at least it's not for me, maybe in the past. Now, the index is a weighted average of this basket of goods. So what that means is that each item that's included has a different weighting based on how important that particular item is. So in other words, like what share of total household consumption that item accounts for. So price rises of each item will affect the index differently based on what their weighting is. Something that has a higher weighting will affect the index more than an item that has a lower weighting. So it's weighted more towards these important items. The release shows us the percentage change for a period of time, typically monthly or yearly. And it's usually also split between CPI covering all items and core CPI, which doesn't include energy and food, since those items are usually more volatile. 
However, since households don't really have much choice but to buy those volatile goods, it's generally more important to include them. And that's typically why central banks favor that reading rather than looking at the core CPI reading. Now, some countries also choose to split the release into different categories. For example, the US, they split their release into CPIU, which is for all urban consumers, which represents 89% of the population, and CPIW, which is for urban wage earners and clerical workers, which represents 28% of the population. Inflation, GDP, and employment levels in an economy are all closely linked. If you saw our previous video about GDP, click up there to watch it, you'll remember that we discussed the inner flow in the economy. So when more money is circulating in the inner flow, it means that companies employ more people, increase wages, which in turn means that consumers have more money to spend, so there's an increase in demand. And as we discussed earlier, this increase in demand can then lead to demand pool inflation. So if inflation is on the rise, it can be a sign that an economy is growing. Likewise, if we look at employment figures, like the NFP release in the US, and see that wages are rising or the unemployment level is reducing, we can expect more spending in the economy as well. However, since too much inflation will be reducing people's purchasing power, it can also be harmful for an economy as well, especially if it gets out of control. This is where central banks come into the equation, as they'll usually be targeting a particular rate of inflation while still trying to maintain a good level of employment. So since inflation and employment are closely linked, this is why we see things like the dual mandate that the Federal Reserve has. When inflation starts to rise too much, this is when central banks will start to look to take action by doing things like raising interest rates. By doing this, they make it more expensive to borrow money and it incentivizes saving money more, both of which will lead to a reduction in the level of money circulating in the economy. It would cause spending to fall and therefore to inflation dropping. This means that central banks need to follow the economy's CPI data closely along with other measures of inflation to help make their decisions. It's also why the market follows it as it not only gives a gauge of how the economy is doing but also helps to predict and anticipate the future course of action of the central bank that would directly affect markets. So that's CPI in a nutshell. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series yet, check out this playlist that's on screen to start watching those. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you found this useful or interesting and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys.